Hello, in this quick walkthrough tutorial, you'll get a chance to see the new features inside of Photomatix Pro version 6. This is perfect for both new users and experienced users, as you'll learn how to open up images and take advantage of the core features. To start, I've already launched the Photomatix Pro application. Now, I'm going to load the images that I'd like to work with. I've downloaded five sample images that show a series of bracketed photos from our website. Here, the photographer has captured multiple different exposures to convey what's happening in the scene. Now, you'll notice some different options within the photo, including that a few things are moving around. Let's go ahead and load these images. I'll drag them inside of the application. You can also drag them onto the application icon and load them in by navigating and choosing. Once you've dragged them in, you'll see that the images are loaded into the Load Photos window. And what we can see here is general information about the image before the merge. Photomatix Pro attempts to read the metadata of the images and detect key things such as the exposure time for the different photos. If everything looks correct and all of the images are loaded, you can then click Next, Choose Merge Options. This gives you a choice of how the files are merged. For example, it's a good idea to choose Align Source Images. This will allow the images to automatically align, and you can specify the method. In this case, the photos were taken on a tripod. Even when shooting on a tripod, it's possible to have slight movement due to the wind. But if you've shot handheld, Photomatix Pro can handle that as well. I'll let the image crop in case it needs to at the edges because of slight shifts. Next, I will choose the option here to remove ghosts. You might have noticed inside the photos there was slight movement. During the different exposures, some of the subjects were moving. For example, the people moving here in the foreground, or the boat slightly shifting around. What we can do here is take advantage of Photomatix Pro's ability to remove that slight movement, which can result in a ghosted image. Next, I can decide to remove noise. If you think the scene is potentially subject to noise because of different exposures or perhaps longer shutter times, you could take advantage of noise removal. If you've already processed the images and done this to the original stills, that might not be necessary. When ready, simply click the button labeled Align and Show Deghosting. This will merge the five files together into a new high dynamic range image and give the ability to remove some of the ghosted areas. The images are automatically aligned and merged to create a high dynamic range photo. In this case, we're using five JPEGs just to make it easier for you to download the files, but you can use five RAW files or five high quality TIFF files as well. You now have the option to control deghosting. The automatic deghosting option will allow you to choose a base image. This will let Photomatix evaluate the image and attempt to remove any movement or potential deghosting. You can also go selectively and zoom in here and see any potential problem areas. For example, where people were moving on the beach, you see slight ghosting. This would allow you to mark the areas manually where you have a concern. Simply right click and choose Mark as Ghosted Area. You can then preview the deghosting for that area and snap it in. If we take a look at other areas where there's potential movement, this boat comes to mind. Let's return to the selection mode here. And we'll indicate the boat. And mark that for deghosting. And I can click Preview. And you see it snaps in well. Let's return to the selection mode. And I can zoom back out to get an overview of the image. That looks good for now, so I'll click OK to complete the merging of the image. Now the high dynamic range photo is generated. We can now take advantage of the HDR rendering workflow. Photomatix Pro ships with several different presets. You can click on different thumbnails here in the right hand column to get an idea of the many different methods and styles available from painterly and surreal type imagery, to very vibrant colors, to things that are photorealistic, or even black and white photography options. There are many to explore. 
For now, let's try one of the newer methods. I'm going to click the pop-up list here and choose the new method that was just added with version 6 called Tone Balancer. Now you'll see five different presets. These take advantage of the Tone Balancer method, as indicated here in the pop-up menu on the left. You can also easily switch between the different methods. Let's start with the realistic method, and I like how that looks. To see a side-by-side, -side, I can click the Compare button here and get an idea of the original photo on the left and the merged high dynamic range photo on the right. I'll click the button again to return to the high dynamic range file. Now let's refine the effect. In the HDR settings area, you can adjust how the tone mapping effect is applied. For example, for the tone balancer method, I can increase the strength or decrease the strength of the effect. And this is really opening up the amount of dynamic range. I could adjust the lighting effect to change how the brighter highlights are merged in, and even boost the overall brightness if I'd like. In this case, I'm going to darken things a little bit with lowering the lighting, but add a little bit of micro contrast. If you zoom in here, you can see some of the effects better by looking at the high quality photo. This will make it easier at higher magnifications to judge things. You can also click and it will show you a preview area. So making fine adjustments to micro contrast, black clipping here and white clipping to further enhance the ends of the dynamic range, give me a better idea of what's happening in the overall image. That looks good. Now, I can move on to color settings, and this is one of the biggest new additions to Photomatix Pro version 6. What's nice here is the ability to easily target a range of colors. For example, if I click the pop-up list here, I can choose a color or a range that I'd like to work with. Let's start with cyan. For example, if I increase the saturation of the cyan, you see that it brings out the water. I can also shift the hue to change the color of the water so it matches what I saw when taking the photo or the image in my mind's eye. And I can refine the overall brightness of that area. By being able to choose different zones, such as orange, I can now go after the buildings in the rock. Pulling down the saturation slightly and darkening that area while subtly shifting the hue, giving a lot of flexibility and control. Remember, Showing the split screen can help you better judge what were some of the colors in the original photo if you're trying to reference those, or to see just how far you've changed things. Let's go back here. Another thing that's quite nice is the ability to paint in an adjustment. So if I click here on the brush icon, this gives me a tool that allows me to brush in the adjustment. I'll choose the option to detect edges, which will automatically find contrast as I brush and essentially help me stay within the lines. I can see a preview of the brush by mousing over, and this gives me the ability to adjust the overall size, the softness of the brush for the transition, and the opacity of the brushed effect. For example, you can brush in lower opacity strokes and build them up. What I'm going to do here is brush in a little more saturation and lower the brightness of the sky. So now, as I start to paint in the sky here, you see it makes the change, and as I near the horizon line for the water, it's automatically detecting that edge and not bleeding over. This makes it very powerful to paint in just the types of adjustments that you'd like. After you make the painting, you can still continue to refine. For example, putting a little more saturation in the sky and darkening it further. If you need to make additional selections, you can. For example, I can click the option here to make a new selection, and in this case, I'm going to darken things down a little bit, but paint with lower opacity, allowing me to adjust here. There we go. And I've painted slightly on the foreground. Let's build that stroke up a little stronger. There we go and we're affecting just that church, giving me the ability to pull out the saturation a little bit more and slightly adjust the temperature 
In this case, removing sort of the orange glow or color cast that the brick was absorbing from the sun, taking it back to a purer color of the stone that I desire. At the bottom, you also have the ability to easily blend. Just open up the blending section and you can choose one of the original photos. Let's close the brush tool here. This allows you to choose any of the original exposures, such as the underexposed or overexposed image, and blend that back in with an opacity slider. This allows you to avoid overdoing things and mix back in some of the original base photo, which can be desirable. Additionally, you have a brush tool so you can control where that mixing occurs. Similar controls here, adjusting the size and the softness, and this will allow me to mix areas in. For example, again, painting over a little bit of the foreground here to bring back some of the building fronts. If you change your mind, you can just click clear and it will remove it or use the undo button. Now that the image is really looking the way I desire it, I'll move on to finishing. So I can click the next finish button. The full quality file is now generated from your source files and it opens. Now let's reposition this slightly so we can better see it. There we go. And the finishing touch controls provide four options. Let's start with the first. Contrast allows you to adjust the image. You'll find presets here for different levels of contrast that can be easily applied. These are further refining the highlights and the lights, and you can see what happens inside of the gamma curve down below, allowing you to further push different tonal ranges for additional contrast and you can add more or less, being quite subtle or very dramatic. Next is Sharpen. I suggest when using Sharpen, you consider zooming in. Go to the full size image. This will allow you to better judge some of the key details. So for example, if I applied medium sharpening to this image, you see that some of the rock texture really comes through much better. The next tab allows you to crop. For this, I would suggest zooming back out and seeing the default size. This will allow you to crop. You can free crop or choose an aspect ratio, such as the original ratio of the photo, allowing you to choose what part of the image is shown and recompose the image itself. When ready, just click the apply button to store the crop. If you change your mind, you can click Reset, and it will take you back to the uncropped image. Lastly is the new Straighten tool. This allows you to adjust the image by tilting it or rotating it. For example, if there are challenges because you are taking the picture at an angle, or some of the architectural details don't look straight, you can compensate. For example, we can tilt the image vertically to add or subtract emphasizing some of those angles. We can also tilt horizontally, which allows us to adjust the photo, in this case giving a little more prominence to the side of the island. And since the horizon line looks just slightly off, I can compensate by rotating here until I feel that the horizon is level. And this makes it easy to get a more professional looking image, allowing for slight adjustments that might need to be made to the perspective. When you're ready, click the Done button. The image is now ready to save. Simply choose File, Save As. This allows you to choose where the image is stored. You can choose a high quality file format, such as TIFF 16-bit for printing, or if you wanted to go to the web, just choose JPEG. You can also, from the Save with Size option, Choose lower quality sizes if you needed to downsample for things like web posting or to make a smaller download. I'm going to uncheck the option here to open the image in another application, but Photomatix Pro is compatible with several other applications, making it easy to add the image to any tool that you might use as a library or for further editing. However, with the new finishing tools, you won't likely need to jump to other applications. When ready, click the Save button and your file is stored. This completes our look at Photomatix Pro 
version 6. You'll find more resources available on the HDRSoft website. Thanks for watching.